Hi, I'm Spencer Ziegler. I'm Serena Halstead. Hi, and this is Melissa Smith, and welcome to our Data Lit Podcast. So today we will be looking or continuing with our assessment method series. And so far we have in our first episode, we looked at a selected response and we shared that while it might be a popular or widely used method of the four, it tends to be best used for knowledge and some uh, reasoning learning targets. Then in the next episode, we looked at extended written response. And in that uh, episode, we shared that that was a method that works best when trying to sort of get at that deeper reasoning. Today, we want to look at the third one, and that's um, called personal communication. And so I don't know about you guys, but when I think of personal communication, um, I sort of, if someone had asked me when I first started teaching to list ways of measuring kids, um, what they know and are able to do, personal communication was not top on the list. Uh, Mm -hmm. So what about you? Yeah, same. Like, in some ways, it's the most natural form of assessment. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I never thought of it as like capital A assessment. Right. Serena? Um, and the same here. Um, personal communication for me is just like, you know, it's a regular class discussion with my teacher. I didn't thought of it like, you know, my teacher is assessing me through this. And I didn't even know that it was a type of assessment method. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt the same way too. So when um, so this uh, series is based off that book, uh, Classroom Assessment for Student Learning. And when I was reading up on it, and they mentioned personal communication as a type, you know, they defined it as gathering the gathering of information about learning through the interactions with students. So I was just like, well, then that's almost like like you said, Spencer. That's like everything, right? So you're talking about um, the instructional questions and the answers that you have, classroom discussions, interviews, oral exams. Mm-hmm exams, student journals and logs. And then I was just like, oh, well, then that's like like what I do as a teacher. Like everything yeah. seems to me like uh, personal communication. So I'm thinking about personal communication, like the intentionality of it. So mm-hmm. um, it's not just like this regular classroom discussion I'm having with my teacher. Um, I'm thinking of there's a planned time for when maybe students get a chance to um, maybe the teacher beforehand give the students something that she wants them to talk about research on. And then um, there's that planned time when we're going to come back in class as the student and we're going to have a conversation about what we went out and search information on. So I'm thinking, you know, personal communication being more something structured than a regular classroom activity, um, you know, regular classroom everyday discussion with the teacher. I agree. Like, um, so the more I read about personal communication, as, as Spencer says, like capital A, the, I agree with the intentionality in it. So I started to plan for it in my lesson plans, right? I would be intentional about what question I wanted to ask at what point, um, you know, what questions I wanted students to ask of each other. Um, and then like really sort of um, encourage that sort of dialogue. Like, like you said, it's not like any sort of dialogue, but be more planful for the type of dialogue and discussion that I wanted to have in the classroom. Yeah, that's a good point. And it touches once you accept that personal communication can be a powerful assessment method, that kind of forces you to think a little bit more strategically, like you guys are saying. So it's not just the extroverts are going to have a chance to show what they know, but it might mm-hmm. be more problematic for different types of students. Um, so I think that intentionality is, is key. In the book, they also talked about so personal communication is best used for assessing the knowledge targets, your reasoning targets, and any of those skill targets that require oral communication. So like speaking a foreign language or giving an oral presentation. And so mm-hmm. as a teacher, I found it helpful that during the formative assessment phase, when you're trying to like um, diagnose a problem or a misconception that a student is having, again, uh, that personal communication tends to be uh, very very helpful. Yeah, that's a good point. And nice job plugging our next series assessment types <laughs> where we'll talk about formative assessment. Right, right. Um, Stiggins and, and, and Shapui, who are two of the four authors of the book, um, also said that personal communication works well when student learning would directly be affected by the feedback given. Mm-hmm. So I feel as though that's like a nice segue into how does 
personal communication promote the elements of um, effective feedback? What do you guys think? So what I like about um, personal communication in terms of feedback is that the teacher is right there in the moment with the student. So Mm -hmm. um, it's like an instant communication going on back and forth. Um, You speak, I speak, and uh, Whatever corrections need to be made or whatever whatever error I'm hearing as a teacher, I can listen and clarify as I go. And other students will be there, you know, chiming in. So it's a immediate feedback that students need so that they can, you know, continue with the learning and not continuing with um, errors in learning. Right. So it seems to um, really highlight that timeliness. Mm -hmm. And like we said, because it's done, the frequency with which it is done in the classroom, you get that ongoing aspect as well. Yeah. And so the timeliness is interesting because it can be the most timely and that it's a real time conversation. So you get that Mm -hmm. immediate feedback. And because it's a conversation, it can be, I think, a little bit more user friendly, where mm-hmm. sometimes I think um, sometimes I think empathy gets lost when something is just communicated through writing. Um, but mm-hmm. with a conversation, you're able to emote more, you're able to kind of pass on there. Um, at the same time, it cannot be as timely. Stiggins points out that, yes, it's timely to give that feedback, but it's also time consuming for the teacher if you're going to be going kid by kid and giving mm-hmm. giving mm-hmm. that personal com- communication feedback. Um, with that said, if you're able to lean into peer feedback with research shows can be really effective, then you can really make it ongoing and consistent. So it might be a little bit more informal as opposed to formal. But if you consciously build in personal communication, be it student to teacher or student to student in each lesson, I think you can really tap into some of those elements of feedback. I agree with you. Um, I think and we'll talk about those elements um, in another series as well. But the importance of student Students, right, because as a teacher, mm-hmm. you're thinking all of this is on me, right? I have to be in control of all of this. Yep. But again, assessments work best when the students are involved in it. And mm-hmm. so, teaching kids how to provide personal communication, how to use the elements of personal communication to give each other feedback, I think is very important as well. Yeah, and that goes back to that intentionality point, where if you invest time early on in the school year to kind of train them in some models for how they can do that or some protocols, Mm -hmm. then that's going to pay for itself because then you're able to get really useful feedback coming from students to students. Um, And one of the the one of the things that holds people back sometimes, I think, with peer feedback is that like, oh, what if they're not getting great feedback from a kid. But the research actually shows, and we'll drop this in the the show notes, that the process of delivering the feedback to another student forces kids to reflect on what the goals are and what the learning standards are. So even just delivering good peer feedback helps the kid themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think Mm -hmm. personal communication can be really powerful. And I think um, as teachers, we have to allow ourselves some grace, right? You won't you can't expect perfection on day one. So on day one of trying this, everybody's not going to be giving the perfect feedback. But I mean, if you use those scaffolds, you use um, different question stems, different answer stems, and over time, you know, students get used to this is a process and they get better over time. And and there's, I think, some tools, some technology that can help you here. Um, So I'm thinking about like something like Flipgrid. Whereas if you're going to go as a teacher one by one and use personal communication, that might eat up the entire period. But if there's a Flipgrid set up, then all of a sudden you're able to, at a different time, kind of give hear what the kids can tell you about their understanding of the standards and then reply without it eating them up a bunch of the class time. It can also be more beneficial for those introverted students for whom just kind of speaking up in the middle of class might be a barrier to them showing what they know. So our sister podcast, uh, WCPSS Digital Learning, and we'll link that in the show notes as well, um, put out an episode uh, this summer, um, giving meaningful digital feedback. The, that, that might be a useful resource for teachers or how to use some of those technological tools to give feedback through personal communication. One of the things I find, um, and I'm glad that personal communication is co- sort of following um, the extended written response, is I sort of see those two, um, they're like cousins, distant mm-hmm. cousins or close cousins, in that for students, like you said, Spencer, for students who um, are sort of shy and don't like to mm-hmm. speak out, they they, um, 
might prefer the written extended written response to share and show what they know. Whereas for those kids who, um, you know, writing is not their thing, quote unquote, not their thing, then the being able to share it orally or Mm -hmm. um, uh, that personal communication might be, you know, favorable to them. So again, you know, for teachers to have both of these in their tool belt uh, seem really applicable. Definitely. And one of the things I think of when I'm thinking of personal communication, it's not just being shy, but even differences in culture. Some In some cultures, you're told to speak up. Right. If that is mm-hmm. if you're doing a, a verbal personal communication, mm-hmm. while in some cultures you are basically a, a, as a teacher, the teacher is supposed to speak, the, the adults speak and students listen. And so just thinking of the diversity of our classroom, um, when we're thinking, when we're planning for personal communication, you know, there are different types, like, you know, as Melissa mentioned, it's students, journal, verbal communication, things like that. So we have to be very mindful as to the students that are in our classroom and what they're comfortable with. So I I agree with you that that is key to have a variety of examples of personal communication, because, again, it's not just the oral aspect of it, Mm -hmm. right? It can lend itself to a written aspect in terms of the student journals and student logs. And your point about, you know, being aware of the students in your class also uh, brings to mind is for me, is when I'm in the classroom using personal communication, um, because of that openness, I guess, that personal communication can bring, it makes me think of, I need to sort of be aware of co-creating that safe space, right? Mm-hmm. That that needs to be an aspect of it as well. Because with extended written, you know, sometimes... Well, most often it's it's a you know it's between the student and the teacher, but um, when you think of personal communication, there is a sharing out beyond myself and my teacher, but others can see or hear what I'm saying, and so the importance of having and creating a safe space for students to be able to do that, I think, is also key and um, worthy of mention. I like that you mentioned that, Melissa, because when you think about teaching and, you know, learning, it's all about creating that safe environment. Mm -hmm. Students really cannot learn if they're not feeling safe in the space where learning is taking place. Um, So that's definitely something that teachers will always have to be thinking of, making their students feel safe. And, you know, even in that space, tell students straight up, some students will be talking more than others, but letting them know that, you know, they're growing at different rates and that is fine and encourage the conversation let them know that it's there's no wrong or right answer here you understand and uh, you know it should show an appreciation when the student even say something yeah and i think you you raise we've talked a lot about how personal communication can be a, a viable assessment method to tackle the standards um but also the fact is that our kids are more than just the standards. And we talk about, you know, right. they need to be good communicators and those interpersonal okay. skills. Um, so I think it's obviously a, a necessary and essential assessment method to help our kids be all the things that we want them to be. So I'd like to end with... Um, one of the statements that the authors of classroom assessment put out there in that personal communication allows us to access prior knowledge, peak curiosity, check for understanding, provoke and explore thinking and create new learning. And so, um, Again, if you want to know more about ways in which you can do that, please check out the book, Classroom Assessment for Student Learning. We'll pop that into the show notes. And so the next time we will be looking at the fourth and final uh, assessment method that we have called performance assessment. So I'm looking forward to that because I think we're going to have um, even better discussion. And so don't forget, as always, if you want to share ideas, communicate any questions that you have, go to www.wcpss.net forward slash data lit. We have an up and coming session around questions and answers. So we hope to be using a lot of your questions. Uh, Thank you for joining us and see you soon.